What is up YouTube? James Beck here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Bectric Battles. Today is the last episode with this rain seismitoad team. We got the team of Polytoad, Seismitoad, Pinsir, Cartana, Incineroar, Tapu Koko. Let's get started and play some games. So overall, how I felt about the team is it was a pretty fun team. Seismitoad was really cool to try out. Uh, Pinsir was also really cool to try out when we were able to bring it to some games. Rain plus like Coco Cartana is still very strong in any any team really and it's just been a lot of fun to play around with this team. Of course this team I've noticed had some bad matchups as well. Zapdos was a pain to deal with for this team. Seed Zapdos especially. It was extremely hard to get around. And also there were probably a few Pokemon that gave me some trouble and hard Trick Room wasn't exactly the best matchup because of no ways to really prevent Trick Room. Maybe stalling out with Fake Out. And we haven't really got to use that mode I really want to use. Maybe we'll find it in this episode, who knows. But I really want to go like a Pinsir Incineroar, Fake Out Swords Dance setup mode. But I feel like with Rock Slide as such a common move, the most common team that uses being Landers and Incineroar threatening the Mega Pinsir. It was really hard just to set up that position for Swords Dance. As we got Razor from the United Kingdom, 1722 rating as our first opponent of today. Bring a Gardevoir team, and he is known for Gardevoir. He has used it ever since the Sun and Moon Doubles Battle Spot. So, let's see here. We got Gardevoir, Landers, Farian, Zapdos, Cartana, Incineroar, and Tapafini. He used to run Aegislash. He's experimented around with the, uh, the Steel type, as he told me. So, let's see. What do I exactly like here? Gardevoir is a bit of an interesting matchup. It's not the best matchup for me. Yet, I don't think it's the worst matchup for me. I don't really like dealing with Landers. I'm not sure if Landers is going to come out in this game, though. I definitely do want to say that Cartana... Maybe Cartana, Fini, Zapdos, Gardevoir. I could definitely see that. Uh, Z, move, Z, Zapdos has been something he used to use a lot. So, that could be something that I can indicate. Hmm. I want to try out my Swords Dance mode. Uh, I don't think it would go well against like a Guard of War plus uh, Zapdos lead. Again, Zapdos is pretty problematic to deal with. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what my best potential lead here is. Maybe Incineroar here as a lead. Incineroar Cartana maybe with Seismitoad Politoed? gonna feel weird not having Tapu Koko but I just really don't know what I'm supposed to have in this matchup because Gardevoir plus Zapdos is super concerning for my team and I do want to see if I can try to snatch a Tailwind if I could snatch a Tailwind that would be pretty good I'm not sure how this is gonna go though in retrospect but we're gonna see Cartana Fini which is actually an amazing lead for me because of the fact that I will be able to get my Incineroar and Cartana out on the field and we can just draw off a fake out on Leaf Blade, I think. I think that would be a very safe play. We could see Cartana switch out. We could see Feeny switch out. It's Misty Seed Cartana as well. Okay. He has talked about this. I do remember him talking about Misty Seed Cartana in the past. So get the Intimidate off, which is good. If you want to switch out Cartana, you lose your Seed Boost. Fake out plus Tailwind might be a very solid option here. But I don't outspeed Cartana. I'd be better just to get the chip damage onto top of Feeny though. Maybe a fake out and just Tailwind is a very safe play. And I do like get going for the Tailwind here. Although I do think there's a Zapdos potentially in the back. And I would assume Gardevoir. But there could be maybe, I don't know, Landris potentially. We're going to see the Cartana actually retreat. So it does not want to take any attacks. And Sinnoh is going to come out from my opponent's side, which is okay here. As Incineroar will throw down and intimidate, which means my opponent no longer has a Misty Seed boost, so my Seismitoad is still going to do a massive amount. We are going to get a Fake Out off into the Feeny, which isn't going to do much. We do get a Tailwind up with our Cartana, and now it's the question of what does my opponent do in the future turns. Because right here, I don't know if you call Mind or anything. I'd assume it's just a Fake Out and maybe attack my... Uh... I would assume maybe... Hmm. Well, I do want to just detect here, I think, and go into Seismitoad, because Seismitoad can put on pressure. The thing is, I don't know what the Fiend is going to do. Hydro Vortex is not something I would appreciate, and there could be a Calm Mind. Maybe my opponent reads to protect from Cartana, but we're going to see the Incineroar double out, which is a very nice play into Gardevoir, actually. Okay. So Gardevoir going to come out, trace my Swift Swim, which isn't too big of a deal, as we will detect here. Let's see what the Fiend went for. I'm guessing it's a Muddy Water here. 
get muddy water. So this might be Specs Feeny. That could be a thing. Let's find out how much damage it does, because it could definitely be uh No, it's not Specs. Uh it does get an accuracy drop, which is a little unfortunate. <sighs> what do you do if you're my opponent? If you're my opponent, I think you would go out and Incineroar for the Feeny slot and protect Gardevoir. Because I could double in the Gardevoir with Leaf Blade plus Hydro Vortex. My opponent wouldn't appreciate that. Yeah, I just don't see a reason not to actually double up into the Feeny slot. Or maybe I could double out my Kartana. Maybe doubling out my Kartana is also pretty good. Um... You know what, I'm just going to Leaf Blade and Hydro Vortex to Feeny slot. Yeah, because Feeny's going to retreat. I'm pretty sure that's going to be Kartana. Yep. So I do... Oh, it's Kartana, not Incineroar, actually. That's not what I expected. That's 100% not what I expected here. Uh, Gardevoir Mega Evolves. I'm not sure if that means that my opponent's going on the offense or not, because I could have doubled in the Gardevoir here. Yeah, Gardevoir protects. Okay. Uh, not the worst case, I guess. Because Leap Blade into Hydro Vortex might be able to get rid of the Kartana, depending on the spread. And even if it doesn't, I mean, I get a lot of damage into Kartana. And Kartana is a Pokemon that I don't appreciate switching into because of the fact that it can click Grass Type Move or Sacred Sword and do a bunch of damage to my team. So I'll happily get rid of this Kartana. But the problem is I don't like how I'm dealing with the Gardevoir now. We'll go for the Hydro Vortex here. Target down the Kartana. Yeah, it doesn't KO. Not sure if the Kartana is Protect either. Hmm. I think Sludge Bomb into Gardevoir is pretty safe, and just a Sacred Sword into the Kartana. This Tailwind is still up, so I do have the Speed Advantage. I'm not sure if you Trick Room here or go for Hyper Voice, but either one won't knock me out. So I'll go for Sacred Sword. We're going to see the Guard of actually retreat. Is this going to be Incineroar? Yeah, that's Incineroar. Okay. So that's fine because I get a bitter chip onto that Incineroar. I mean, I appreciate that chip damage. I really do. And let's see what the Kartana does. Does it protect here? No, it doesn't. So I'm going to get a Beast Boost, which negates one of the Intimidates. So now I'm only at minus one still. And I get some decent damage off the Incineroar. Of course, a Hydro Pump would have been more appreciated. But I don't want to go for Hydro Pump when I really just don't have to yet. And I don't think Hydro Pump would have knocked out Incineroar anyway. Because that is definitely Assault Vest Incineroar. 100%. Our was going to come out. And I kind of just want to double in the Kartana at this point. Although my Kartana is so precious in this game. To beat down my opponent's Feeny. Can I beat down my opponent's Feeny without it? I really do need it. But I kind of want to make more aggressive reads in this game. Because I think Trick Room might be coming out. I don't see how my opponent really stops me. Um, I mean, as long as my opponent doesn't double target, I think I should be fine. I'm actually going to go for Leaf Blade plus um, Leaf Blade plus Sludge Bomb into Guard Wars. We're going to see that I actually switch out in from the Incineroar into Feeny. I think my opponent expected my Incineroar to come out, which is great for me because I get the damage on Gardevoir. This Leaf Blade and the Sludge Bomb probably won't knock out, but it puts in that range. We're going to see the Hyper Voice come out, which, again, is fine. I did not mind that. That does a good amount, though. Sludge Bomb. <sighs> I missed, though. Okay, that's actually pretty annoying. That is pretty annoying. Um... Oh, man, that's actually really annoying. Okay. I think Politoed, because I think I need speed advantage. My opponent can trick room here. I think you do trick room here if you're my opponent. But let's find out. Because I I do need Kartana. And I had a Sash, and I didn't think my opponent would fake out Hyper Voice because it my Kartana slot, because it was so obvious. Hyper Voice is going to come out, which is fine. Water? I'll mind it. Ooh, I really want to go for Helping Hand, but I know that's not really an optimal play here. I would click Hydro Pump, but... <sighs> hmm. Is there a better way out? 
I think I gotta go for the accuracy. I think I gotta go for accuracy. I gotta hope. I gotta go for Helping Hand Sludge Bomb. I gotta hope this connects. Okay, we do connect. That should knock out Gardevoir. Okay, that's really good. That is really good. Boomblast gonna come out. Is that into Polytoad or is that into? Yeah, it's into Polytoad. Okay. Doesn't knock out. Doesn't get a berry. Gets gets me my berry. Excuse me. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now we're gonna see Incineroar, and all I have to do is get rid of the Incineroar, so I can win the game with my Kartana. And the way I think I can do that is go out into my. Um, I think the way I do that is go out into my Incineroar, and protect Politoed. I think that's the first step. Second step is if my opponent knocks out Incineroar with Muddy Water, that's fine. He might even call mine again, but it really doesn't matter at this point. I'm going to get Incineroar in, get that Intimidate off into my opponent's Incineroar. Uh, have that Fake Out pressure, get that Intimidate off into Incineroar, which could actually be pretty big for some calcs. Let's see what my opponent's going to go for. It. Moonblast going to come out into the Politoed and a knockoff? Knockoff. Into Politoed. Okay, that's great. Because now I can go for a Fake Out into the Feeny and a Scald into the Incineroar. So let us get this damage off into my opponent as Feeny flinches. It's not all going to come out. Okay, so it's a fast Incineroar. That's actually really fast Incineroar because my Politoed is not min speed. That's really fast. Okay. As long as I get Seismitoed in healthy, I should be good for the rest of the game though. Yeah, because I think Helping Hand Earth Power should be able to eliminate the Incineroar. Um, or should I just knock off? I really don't care if you muddy water here. Um, what a double up knockout Politoed. I feel like the Moonblast plus knockoff wouldn't knock me out, especially with no berry. You know what? I'm just gonna scald plus knockoff. Muddy water is gonna come out. Politoed avoids, but it wouldn't have knocked out Politoed. The point is having Politoed alive. We're going to see the Muddy Water come out. That will finish off my Incineroar. Yep. It's fine. And Knockoff going to go on the Politoed once again. But again, it, the Double Up wouldn't have knocked me out. There's no way it would have. Scald going to come out into the Incineroar. Doesn't pick up the Knockout. Maybe Icy Wind was a bit more optimal. Because then I could help me get Earth Power. But I'm pretty sure Seismitoad should be faster than Ophini. Otherwise, then it's a mind game. Because now I can go for um, Earth Power. I can Earth Power Protect. And I should be able to outspeed the Seismato. I mean, the. Yeah, I outspeed the Feeny. Earth Power will go off in the center. Perfect. And this allows me to get Cartana in. Helping Hand Leaf Blade should be able to finish off the Feeny. And even if you don't, I can just Helping Hand Sludge Bomb to put it in range of that berry. So, hoping you connect with Muddy Water here. Nice. Perfect. So Muddy Water is going to connect from the top of Feeny into my Seismitoad. Seismitoad is going to go down. However, I do not mind that, as I said before. I get to get a free switch into my Kartana and go for the uh, Helping Hand Leaf Blade. I did play quite a bit aggressive in this game, and I think uh, my opponent, who is known as Conan Wild, by the way, did uh, try to make some aggressive doubles. But however, I felt like I was pretty safe because I feel like... Um, I couldn't make aggressive plays because I really just don't think one you double target my Kartana there with uh, Hyper Voice Fake Out and it wouldn't knock out anyway. Plus, um, the fact is, yeah, I just really don't think you you would need to flare of a type of voice there, and that is very unlikely. I feel like because you probably know that Kartana is a potential win condition, and I think I could risk it right there because of the fact. I feel like I just could have risked it because of the fact that my opponent knows that Kartana is important. Maybe has that mindset that I won't trade my Kartana right there. So we'll go for a double up into the other Pokemon. I forgot what I had on the field. I think it was Seismitoad. So I was able to get a bunch of damage in the Gardevoir. Uh, luckily, I was very fortunate to hit the Helping Hand Sludge Bomb into the Gardevoir. Of course, I didn't have to go for Helping Hand if I hit the first one, but I don't mind that. As long as I connected uh, the Helping Hand Sludge Bomb, luckily I did. So was able to do that. But uh, otherwise, yeah, very good game to um, the Razor. As we'll be right back with the second game of today's episode. All right, we are back with battle number two. 
and yeah so again we haven't really brought mega pincer and actually what's funny is i've actually seen a lot of my team on battle spot uh and showdown actually some viewers probably if you're using this team let me know what you people think of this team because i don't know i've seen quite a few variants i've seen the original variant being used i've seen like some people change it up maybe like at kangaskhan for instance over to pincer change the mega pincer slot to salamence i've seen some salamances running around it's been really interesting and i wonder how do people like it so let me know what you think of the team if you have tried it out down below and of course if you do want to try out this team it is in the description down below so if you do want to use it all the spreads are there so otherwise yeah, about this team, I think obviously Salamence probably would be better on this team because, you know, uh, one, it's pretty effective just typing wise, damage output wise, speed typing wise. It's just probably a lot better than Pinsir, but, you know, just using Mega Pinsir, having that option, I think, for the Soizan setup with um, Senra is pretty cool, as well as the Kartana Tailwind as we find our second opponent from Australia, 1709 rating. But yeah, I just wanted to use Mega Pinsir. And this was probably the best team I thought that could uh, arise from it. As we go against pretty much a standard team here, we got Tapu Fini, Amoongus, Incineroar, Landis Farian, Zapdos, and Metagross. So, uh, my opponent doesn't have good rain matchup answers, but of course there is the Zapdos, which is quite frustrating to play against. Very frustrating to play against. It is a Pokemon I do not like playing against. So, um... Oh man, I would love, love, love to bring my pincer here, but it does not have a fun matchup against Zapdos. It does not. And I've also been told maybe I could put Landris over the uh, Incineroar slot, which, you know, could help Zapdos answer But I think it would need to be an effective Mon that can handle Zapdos because of the fact that one, Landris provides double ground, which I didn't like. And two, it's just, I don't really like repeated typing. I really don't, but let's see here. What is my options? I forgot what I did against this team. I think I led Coco, Seismitoad, with Politoad, and I think it was Carton in the back. Let's see how this is going to go. Of course, I'm not exactly sure how my matchup is. There is a Zapdos, of course, but everything else gets pretty much blown away by Seismitoad. So I feel like if I play around the... Um, Zapdos, well then again, there's an Amoongus. Amoongus is very difficult for my team to handle, especially with the Pokemon I'm bringing. Uh, especially my opponent decides to opt for like a Zapdos Amoongus lead, or Zapdos Feeny and then switch into Amoongus and start redirecting my attacks. We're going to have a pretty difficult time. Uh, maybe Pinter was to call then, but it's plus two return on 14 does not get Zapdos. Maybe I should put Rock Slide then. Rock Slide might be more useful, as we're going to see the... Metagross and Sinner lead, which is a very aggressive lead for my opponent. Like, very aggressive here. Now, my question is, would you really fake out here? I'm very curious about this lead, because I don't know what it really accomplishes. I think uh, Double Protect is a safe play turn one. Although, I really could see my opponent just hard switching here. Um, it's better not to risk anything in the best of one, I think. I'll double protect here. Metagross is going to switch out. Okay, that's fair. Into Amoongus, okay. So we do reveal that the Amoongus is here. Luckily, my opponent can't spore any of my Pokemon. We will protect my Tapu Koko here. I could have doubled up the uh, Incineroar, which is what I was thinking of maybe doing. Fake out going to go out into the Seismitoad, okay. So, throw off a Volt Switch, I think, is very fair here, and I think Volt Switch Earth Power and Incineroar. It means my opponent doesn't have either Zapdos or Feeny. Both are actually really good for me, and unless the uh, Amoongus has a Grass-type move, they don't usually tend to carry it, but it looks like I'm going to be able to get a Volt Switch off into the Incineroar, which is going to put it in range of Earth Power, but I don't like how the Amoongus didn't go for a Rage Powder, so <sighs> what's going on here? I'm going to go Politoed. Is that actually a Grass-type move Amoongus? Because that would be really interesting, because we don't tend to see Grass-type moves run on Amoongus very often uh, in VGC 
18. You usually want to you usually see a poison type move like sludge bomb to help with fairies or clear smog. So will be interesting to see. We do get an earth power off knock out the incineroar, which is nice. Uh, no reason to target a Moongus there. And a sludge bomb actually. So just going for the sludge bomb damage immediately into what was trying to be my cocoa slot. So that's actually pretty effective for me because of the fact I was just able to get so much momentum out of that turn. I think Feeny's gonna come out, which is okay. Don't really mind Feeny coming out here. Because at this point, I feel like my Kartana does a fantastic job against my opponent's team. Uh, I think helping in Sludge Bomb should be fine play. Or helping in Earth Power. Helping in Earth Power does more. To Amoongus, who's probably redirecting here. And as long as I get rid of the Amoongus, I should be able to win the game with my Kartana plus my uh, Coco. So Earth Power, actually no redirection at all coming out from my opponent. So I do get that Earth Power, good amount of damage. Here comes the Calm Mind from the Feeny. Which again, my opponent's in range of Leaf Blade, so I don't really mind at all. Let's see what the Moongus is going for, another Sludge Bomb. Yeah, just going to keep firing off Sludge Bombs into the uh, Seismitoad slot. I wonder if that's like supposed to be a count for like um, Muddy Water range. But right here, go for the Helping Hand Hydro Vortex, I think. Try to get as much damage onto that Amoongus as possible. Because I really do need that damage on the Amoongus. And I don't care if Feeny keeps setting up because I do have a Kartana. Amoongus is going to protect. Very smart protect. But again, I don't really mind because Amoongus really isn't just doing anything to my team. And as soon as I get my Kartana in the right position, I'll be able to do really well against my opponent. Because once I get that beast boost, like, this Amoongus, I'm guessing, doesn't have a way to touch my... Uh, Kartana, because you have, we've revealed Protect, we've revealed Sludge Bomb, you want to assume it has Rage Powder and Spore, which are the most common moves on Amoongus, so, yeah, look at that LV and Hydro Vortex doing nothing. <laughs> Muddy Water? That's fine. Hopefully no Accuracy Drop on Politoed, because that can make it, the game a little bit annoying. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted, because I'm fine with that. I get to go out into my uh, Kartana here, and I get to click Leaf Blade and Scald, I think. I wonder if I should scald the Amoongus or if I should scald the Feeny slot. I'm thinking of scalding the either double scalding the um, Feeny slot or because I could see Metagross pivoting for Amoongus here and protect from Feeny and then maybe pivoting Feeny into Amoongus and trying to get rid of Cartana. I'm gonna leaf blade the Feeny and just scald the Amoongus slot because Amoongus really isn't doing anything other than sludge bombing, but Feeny switches out, okay. Into the Metagross. Which I do not mind. So I'll get a Leaf Blade off. This Amoongus just really does not care. Is that a crit? No, that's not even a crit. Okay, so... <sighs> Skull would have been better double up into the Metagross slot. But I think I'm still okay in the position I'm in. The Sludge Bomb going to come out, which is fine. Because <sighs> right now... You have to target my cart. I think Rage Powder comes out here. I'm just going to Sacred Sword, the Metagross slot, and Icy Wind, because it covers my opponent going for like a Stomping into Kartana and a, uh, I don't know what you're going to do. Amoongus is actually going to switch out on a Fiend, which I do not mind. But that means I could have spored the Metagross slot. I'm guessing that means Metagross is going on the offense here, but... I mean, I really wouldn't mind you knocking my Politoed because I'm going to get a good amount of damage to the Metagross either way. Stomping comes out into my Politoed? Yeah, Politoed. I don't mind Politoed going down. Critical hit. I don't know if it mattered. I don't think it did. Sacred Sword going to come out. And yeah, I just don't see how my opponent breaks through this now because I get to bring out Coco now. I can go for a Volt Switch into Metagross and a Leaf Blade very safely into Feeny. I could also go for the Volt Switch in. I could even double target a Feeny if I really, really want to, but I don't have to. So, yeah, I just don't see how my opponent beats this. So, I'll go for the Volt Switch into Feeny. It's a very safe play. Yeah. Volt Switch into Feeny and a... No, no, no. I Volt Switch Metagross and Leaf That's the safest play. I could predict this. I don't have to, though. I really just don't have to predict anything to win the game. 
Phoenix is going to retreat. Should go in Amoongus always. If Metagross doesn't protect, that's game 100%. But at this point, I'm already thinking it's game. Metagross is going to protect. Unless this Amoongus does have something for my cart, which is very unlikely. Like, that's so unlikely. Leaf Blade. Yep. And now I can Gleam plus... Yeah, I can just Gleam Sacred Sword. Actually, I think Gleam plus Leaf Blade should get the Metagross. I'll go for it. Because in case Feeny tries to come in, proc a berry and the Sludge Bomb goes out. Metagross going to protect. Gleam. I guess that means Sludge Bomb's gonna go into Coco, which I still don't mind. I might even live this depending on if the Amoongus is like fully trained or not. Does not get my Coco. Forgot the Metagross could protect it there, but I still think I do win the game by going for Sacred Sword here. Because Metagross is like a 3 a KO anyway. I'm just going to Sacred Sword. Amoongus, again, probably can't touch my Cortana. I still think I win this game regardless. Uh, maybe I should have predicted to protect and just went for Tailwind. Yeah, I probably should have went for Tailwind. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't Metagross attack the before? Well, that could have been a double, mate. That might have been a double. Beanie going to come out. As we're going to see the Ice Punch come out. Could be a 3 of KO, yeah. Sacred Sword into the Metagross. Ah, wait. I messed up big time. I messed up big time. Oh, now it's just Moonblast stomping tantrum or Ice Punch. I messed up big time. I, I'm so sorry, everyone. I messed that up big time. I should have predicted the Metagross just to protect. I kind of got a little bit cocky with my Kartana, and then I just realized, oh, wait. <sighs> Maybe I should have Leap Blade the Amoongus Slides to switch into Feeny. Because I forgot about that possibility, like getting uh, Metagross next to the Feeny. <sighs> that was such a big mistake. I apologize. Like, that should not have been a case at all but unfortunately it looks like we're gonna drop the last game <sighs> i feel like this is the second episode in a row i lost because of my stupidity but uh hopefully i can st uh shake it before the next episode because oh. yeah i probably should and maybe another play i could have done was healthy hand take it toward with uh polytoad they turned my opponent knocked out the uh polytoad because if i help me on take it toward i wouldn't even have to be in this position like, I wouldn't have to be in that position at all because um, Metagross would have been low at that point. I could have probably just gleaned Tailwind, and that probably would have been the episode of the game. So, yeah, I walked into... Wait, did the Metagross go for a double? Wait, I think Metagross did go for a double, didn't it? I think it went for a double protect because it wasn't... Was it a double? I really can't remember. Yeah, because I think Feeny switched out to Moongus, Metagross protected. I went for Volt Switch into Metagross, and I Sacred and I Leap Blade the Moongus. Then it went for a double. Well, I guess even then I should have probably played better in order to avoid that. But well, was it a double? I'm actually gonna look back at the video right now. Okay, I look back at the video. It was a double protect. So that's why, like, I was thinking, wait, how did my opponent really position that, like, perfectly for that? And I realized, oh, it's because my opponent got the double. Because I I thought that was weird. I didn't even realize it was a double until I looked back in the recording. So, ah, I mean, that kind of sucks. But I think I could have still positioned myself better with, um... Okay, so my plan, obviously, was for a Gleam Sacred... Uh, Gleam Leaf Blade to come out into the Metagross slot because... Obviously, the fact that I was able, I would be able to get the knockout to Metagross if my opponent did get, didn't get the double. However, there was still a better play that I realized after the game. What I could have done there was go for Protect with Tapu Koko and a Sacred Sword into Metagross. Now, what that covers is if my opponent gets a double, um, which 
my opponent did. Next turn, I can threaten a Dazzling Gleam Leap Blade like I was doing that turn that I was going for it. Otherwise, because it catches the Phoenix, I get the Beast Boost that I would be able to knock out the Metagross with just one Sacred Sword, and that would be 100% game. Or, if my opponent does get the double, doesn't get the double, I get a Sacred Sword off into Metagross. Which then puts it in range of Gleam 100% of the time. So I can go for a Gleam Tailwind and then just keep Leaf Blade in the Metagross slot. Because I'm pretty sure Leaf Blade would be able to finish off the Metagross there. Catches the Feeny switch in, and my opponent would never be able to really position well uh, with uh, Metagross next to Feeny. So that is the position I could have aimed for for the game. So that's what I was thinking could be the most optimal play there. But I hope everyone enjoyed today's episode of VDC 2018 Back to Battles. I thought it was a bit weird, but I still could have played better in the end to prevent myself from losing to a double protect. However, hope that everyone enjoyed today's episode of VDC 2018 Back to Balance. If you did like it, please leave a like down below, show some support, as well as you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description, such as my social medias, the size of my channel. All that great stuff will be linked in down below, as well as the pace of this team if you do want to try it out. Uh, tomorrow we'll be using a brand new team, or next episode we'll be using a brand new team, and should be a good one. Otherwise, you can always check out my social medias, follow me on my Twitch channel because I've been streaming a lot lately, recently, and I am trying to aim for that Twitch partnership. So would really highly appreciate if you could hit that follow button. And if you do want to see more Pokemon VTC action on my Twitch channel, that is the place where you want to go. Otherwise, uh, have a great day, people. And until we battle again, I'll catch you all later. Mm -hmm.